Hello and welcome back to my garden. First and foremost, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers. We've gotten a few new subscribers on the channel recently because YouTube, I guess, was promoting my video, my last video about the edging, the garden edging and all. And I have some updates on that. So if you wanted to check out some of that, you can jump over to my YouTube community page. Otherwise, it'll probably be another week or two or more before I do my next video on the concrete edging that I'm trying to make for the garden. Uh, but today we're going to be doing planting and that might be in the title. Not sure, but either way, let's talk about what I'm going to be planting. As you can see, I have all sorts of various plants in various stages of growth. Uh, and most of them are not going to be planted out anytime soon because they're cuttings, they're young, they're fresh, such as this Salvia Amistad. I don't know if that'll focus. Hopefully it focuses but it's putting on some new growth. It looks good. This is all not Salvi Amstad. There's all sorts of different things here. So for instance, right now, actually I think we'll plant out some cat mint today. Now they are very small, but I think they hopefully should get a good rooting in and get well established, hopefully, before the winter freezes. Uh, again, I'm growing zone 8B. We do get freezes, but the ground never itself never freezes. So, rock solid hard like it does in most of the rest of the country. Um, so hopefully these would survive and then just take off and flourish next spring. They'll be, they'll be ahead of the others. The others that I have, I'll overwinter them in the greenhouse and then I'll plant them in next spring after the last frost passes. Some of this other stuff is verbena and salvias and there's all sorts of other stuff. But before I even get into that, you guys forgot to remind me, what's the status of those crazy rose cuttings that I took. If you go back a few videos, I did a weird rose experiment, something I saw on late night television where you go back and watch the video. Either way, this was the first rose here, Desdemona. And as you can see, it's, uh, yeah, no, no bueno. The top growth all died off and very gingerly. Let's see if we can pop this out here because what I'm looking for is roots. And there are no roots. That's what I expected. Most of this stem is turning black already. I'm going to say this was a no-go. No this, this didn't work out as planned or as advertised on late night television. Now this is the one in Paralite. Let's go look at the other one. Now this is the other cutting. And this one I put directly into compost and the leaves have not died back yet. It's not showing any new growth per se, but the top leaves haven't died. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Hopefully that focuses. We'll leave this for a few more weeks and hopefully maybe possibly it starts showing growth and then maybe possibly there's something to the weird method that I found on late night television. But we'll see what happens. So today we're going to plant out those cat mint and we're also going to plant out other things. So let me get my shovel and let's get planting. All right, the first two plants I'm going to plant are echinacea and one of the reasons I'm planting them now is so that they can get a good established rooting, hopefully before the winter, as I've mentioned before. I don't know where it is by you. Uh, if you're doing any sort of fall planting or trying to get any sort of perennials uh, or maybe even annuals into the ground now uh, to get a little late season color or something like that, leave those comments below. But I'm gonna drop this one, which is Aloha Coneflower. I picked this up last year at my gar local garden center on clearance. It's been sitting in a pot ever since. This is a dead snapdragon and it really needs to go into the ground. So we're just gonna pop a hole here. Pop this out of the pot and see how root bound it is or isn't. No, it's actually not too root bound, which is good. Drop that in, pull that dirt back in, press into the ground. Now this had started to flower, but I've cut the flower off. Uh, there is another flower bud that looks like it may be your new leaf bud that's pushing up, which is great. So maybe I'll get another, I'll get a late season flower out of it. It's a pale whitish, yellowish thing. But either way, that's in the ground now. And again, hopefully it survives the winter. Hopefully it does well. Now we have, recently we got three inches of rain, uh, some sort of tropical storm that went by. And today we're getting scattered drizzles. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna actually move that out of the way because I think the next one I'm gonna do is right here, maybe. Or should be right in the front. I'm very torn. I don't often think of these things in this area. Here's another snapdragon that just end of life. 
So I think I will put it right next to it. I have no idea what the variety of this one is. It could be a purple, it could be a, a special brand here. But we're also gonna pop this one in here. I'm gonna actually toss some compost in the bottom of this hole. And right now it's actually drizzling just a wee bit. Good root system on this one. Everything's very muddy. I normally wouldn't be planting uh, this kind of stuff on a day like today where it's wet and rainy and muddy because it's you get you everything gets to be a mess of a mess and I'm already a messy gardener if you've been paying attention on the channel here. If you're new to the channel, I'm a messy gardener. So, well, the reason I'm also doing this is because I want to start getting these plants into the ground now, as I mentioned before. But also there's a ton, there's a ton of projects that I want to do this fall and things that need to get done before the winter. So I can get this out of my way now. Back here, uh, hopefully it's in frame, I have one of my red hot pokers and that one I'm going to dig up this year and divide. I was actually going to do it today, but I think I'm going to leave that for maybe Monday or next week or later in the season maybe, we'll see. But that red hot poker is coming up and it's gonna get divided. I may even turn around and divide some of these daylilies right here. I'm not sure about that at this point, but I have an echinacea here. I think this is Marry Me, not sure. But like I said, this one's Aloha. I don't know what that one is. This is a Dahlia. And those are some calendula. Calendula, that's the word I was looking for, calendula. <laughs> so there's a pot of calendula over there. Survive the summer and hopefully it'll start flowering again in the fall. I do plan on planting a bunch of calendula because little did I know, it does very well in the cold. I had a bunch, I had a couple of plants growing all winter long, believe it or not, in the, in the veg garden in a raised bed. And they did surprisingly well. So this year, I think we're gonna do a whole big bed of calendula in the, in the vegetable garden. Let's get on to the next plant. It's amazing how much the sun heats things up. So I'm not gonna dawdle here. We're going to move these pots out of the way. Whew. That's sun. And right here, next to my agapanthus, I'm gonna be planting these catmint. Now I grew these from seed, and again, they are small right now, but I'm hopeful that they will take root and survive the winter, and again, get that early jump. Now I had a cherry brandy Rebecca here. That did not survive the summer. The one behind it over here is very, that's weed. The one here is very sad looking, but it is still alive. So we're gonna leave that, and again, hopefully it comes back more bountiful next year. Now they may not do well in this spot here because this spot does get quite damp when we get heavy rains. So what I'm gonna to try to do is mound up the catmint here. So make a little mound, and hopefully, maybe, possibly, they will be fine, survive, and thrive. Or they'll drown and this was the wrong place to plant them. But, you know, live and learn. I have plants in this agapanthus. Agapanthus do not like to be sitting in very damp soil for very long, from my understanding. And yet here are these two agapanthus plants, which are doing very well. So they got little mounds. They're not very, they're not, wound, uh, they're not mound up very high, just a little bit. And maybe that little bit will just be enough that then they'll, the soil around them will dry out just a little bit quicker and they'll be a little bit happier in this location. Let's move on to the last planting for today. Because I'm a horrible YouTuber, I just filmed this entire segment without having to hit the record button. So I'm now gonna hit the, I've now hit the record button and we're gonna try to do this again. Here I am in the front corner of the flower garden. Now this corner is very shady most of the day. As you can see, we're in shade right now. I planted up a bunch, a ton of foxgloves in this area. Unfortunately, most of them died. Uh, it was mostly due to the lack of watering, the plants being too young, the drought that we had in June. They just didn't make it. Now you can see some of these did make it, which is fabulous. So what I'm gonna do today is add, try not to step any of these plants here, a bunch of baby foxgloves. Because the temperatures are cooling off, I think we're gonna get rain a little more, on a, uh, a little bit more on a regular basis, which will be nice. And I'm gonna try to space these out as much as I can. And the hope is, is that come next spring, if they do flower, or maybe the ones that are older do flower, 
they'll drop their seed in the space. And my hope and goal and plan and vision for this space is that this whole corner, this whole area here, just gets enveloped with foxglove. Uh, and then my problem would be weeding out the foxgloves I don't want if it gets too thick. But just imagine this whole stretch here with nice four foot tall foxgloves. Because that's the plan. That's, that's the theory, this is what I'm going with. Yeah, there's a lot of weeds in here too. So I'm gonna try to weed as I plant. So let's get to it. Now I only planted six today and I have more on the bench. And I may wind up planting them in the next couple of weeks if they get bigger or when they get bigger. Otherwise, I may just keep them over the winter in the greenhouse and then plant them out next spring. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, let me show you what's happening next to me here. This is my rose mint agastache and pollinators are crawling all over it. There is a bee right now. Even though it gets quite a bit of shade, this agastache is doing quite well. Now with the sun coming out, it is getting quite warm. But down here are a couple of more plants that I want to plant. And what we've got is golden ticket privet. And all along the front of this bed here, I'm doing the golden ticket privet as a hedge. But hopefully by year three, it's significant enough and you'll start seeing it all come to shape. And then by year five, hopefully, It'll be four foot tall and I'll be able to trim it into a nice tight hedge twice a year because it grows fast. There's a lot of weeds there too. So ignore the weeds and I'm gonna drop those in the ground real quick. Now I have more golden ticket privet to plant out, but A, that's in the sun right now, and that's sun. Whew. So I'll probably do it in the next couple of weeks when it gets cooler. The other issue is it looks like it might start to storm soon. There's some dark clouds over there. I started my fall planting. Now there are probably now there's other things that I'll probably want to plant out before. The end of the season, such as more golden ticket privet, I wanna see if I can get down to the corner and this way the whole front of the flower garden will be done so far as planting with the golden ticket privet. If you haven't checked out my Etsy store, please go check out my Etsy store. I've added a bunch of new blank note cards there. You could use them for whatever you want, but they have some, but they're all made up of pictures from my garden here. So maybe you just wanna get one and just frame it up for yourself, that's fine. You could do that, or you could send them out to friends, families, loved ones. You remember once upon a time, we used to actually do that, send out thank you cards and things like that. Some of you probably still do, I bet. You can go over there and check that out. Hopefully this fall, as I learn more and more about making things with concrete and getting used to creating things with concrete, I'll have some small items that I can put up on the store that won't cost a lot with shipping and handling. I would do the tiles, the edging tiles that I'm doing now, but I think they're just going to be too expensive to ship. At least that's the way I feel right now. We'll see. Maybe I can do something about that in the future. If you guys are interested, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I can make up some tiles for you guys there. But in the meantime, I'm thinking small things like paperweights, candle holders, uh, some other small knickknacks, maybe some garden ornaments such as uh, little uh, sculptures. We'll see, we'll see what the future holds. But there's always new projects happening here in the garden. There is a ton of stuff I have to do. And the new, I'm not gonna show it to you guys because it looks horrible, but the new section of flower garden bed that I did this year, it's getting overgrown with grasses and other weeds. And that's all my fault. Because I'm a one man show here, one man band, it's always tough to try to keep up with things here in the garden. And something always seems to fall behind the curve. And that was one of those areas. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but that's thunder. So I think that's my cue to wrap this up.
<laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post a new video. Check out all the links below. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Here comes the rain again. <laughs>